On March 11, 2020, the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 to be a pandemic. So here we are, five weeks into the crisis, still watching waves of reported cases sweep across the U.S., and we're likely making some tough calls about our business. To position ourselves for the next chapter, it's critical to have the right team in place. But how do we make sure the team that we have not only weathers this period, but they're on their game and are ready for what's ahead? Hi, welcome to the virtual SMB Summit. I'm Kate Carroll, and I want to talk to you about how to ensure your teams are not just productive, but healthy through this, and how you can come out on the other side with a team that's committed to what's to come and stronger than ever. Everybody's talking about this new normal. Your team is sheltering in place, possibly managing more with less, but you may have had to close an office. You may have had to furlough some people. So how exactly can you get through that and possibly come out stronger? So first, let me just say definitively, to best serve your people, you need to ensure the long-term stability of your business. Whether you're hunkering down or pivoting, that still means keeping your team engaged and making sure that they understand that the moves you, the moves you are making and that they're prepared and motivated to rally together. So how do you do that? Number one, make them part of the changes and helping to find the strategies. There is nothing that people will appreciate more than being included. On the smaller tactical things, have them be a part of the decisions on what to cut and what's of value. Offer up decisions and introduce people to the trade-offs that need to be made. Like, do we really need that primo concession contract? What else could we do to cut corners to keep from having to take other cuts? Bringing people into the fold in even small ways will help wherever you can. On the bigger things, solicit feedback on what they're seeing out in the market and what they're hearing from your clients. You may be trying to get back to normal, but in doing so, you may miss some ways that COVID-19 has changed the environment around you. Take the time to validate and redefine the short, mid, and long-term strategies. Your people are on the front lines, so take advantage of that. Learn from them and let your team have a hand in defining the go forward strategies. Next, on planning and execution, break down everything that needs to get done and give people ownership wherever you're able. You obviously can't do it all, and distribution of authority has the benefit of getting the team engaged. We all know that people who are accountable have skin in the game. Now, key to all of this is communication. People are going through some really scary stuff. They're afraid for their jobs, they're afraid for their health and that of their families, but on top of all that, they're isolated. So acknowledge this and give people space to talk about it. Don't go outside your norm in a way that feels uncomfortable, but be authentic and be honest. Top down, you need to model the right behavior. If you're not a flat organization, make sure that all of your managers are having their regular one-on-ones and that you're collecting the feedback. Take the team's temperature often. Be on point as well. Uh, provide all your leaders talking points so that they can be tight and consistent. Um, when changes do need to be made, like if you are forced to uh, do reduction in hours, furloughs, or layoffs, include references in your communications to the underlying strategies. Not all changes are going to be pleasant, but uh, people need to know that there's somebody steering the ship. A lot of people will internalize the stress, and if nothing is apparently broken, uh, you might be thinking that all is well, but still, over-communicate. Taking care of your people means showing them empathy, and empathy now means transparency. So that's how to communicate. Now let's talk about what to communicate. Clearly, uh, there, are, there are changes that require you know, quick communication. It's the tactical things, benefits, details, and so forth. Give details on the use of sick leave, access to FMLA, and the like. Know the up-to-date regulations in your state, uh, and also include how you're complying with recent mandates. So, for instance, um, the Families First Coronavirus Response Act was passed by the, seven, uh, by the Senate on March 18th. Um, it requires private health plans to cover testing for COVID-19, but some states are also pursuing full coverage of COVID uh, treatment as well, and some uh, have things like early prescription refills. Also, uh, provide stimulus package details if you're pursuing payroll loans. Don't shy away from sharing those things because, again, it, it uh, reflects on your commitment to them as employees as well. Research telehealth options, and if you have an EAP or an, uh, an employee assistance program that includes mental health services, promote it. Understand that there's still a stigma about mental health, and people are not going to want to be the first one to raise their hand and say they need support. Stress that the employee assistance plan is there to help and share stories of where it has helped. If you're able to, 
provide supplies and resources for the realities of sheltering in place. One very memorable gesture from a local business owner where I'm at uh, was buying a truckload of toilet paper from his janitorial supply for his people. Think about necessities of wipes, sanitizers, and masks, but also gestures like gift certificates to their local pizza parlor. Really, it could be anything, but if you can fill one of their needs, your people are going to remember that. Finally, when talking about the future, don't overcommit. This is a fast-changing landscape. Don't say that you'll be able to furlough people and then bring them back unless it's a certainty. If you have to go back on something as critical as that, you lose trust. You lose trust, it may not be today or tomorrow, but you will lose that A-team. The world of work has already changed, and this is going to be a massive inflection point for many. It's going to come down to how we lead in these months to come. But if it's done right, you are able to differentiate yourself and your organization as one with a culture that can balance associate and organizational well-being. So whether you're hunkering down to ride this out or pivoting in a new direction, this is an opportunity to show a new level of transparency and commitment, leveling up your team and coming out of this stronger because you did so as a team. Thank you very much for your time.